Androgens, like steroids, have a well-known side effect, increased aggression. One of the most compelling questions in paleoanthropology is whether a Neanderthal could beat a modern human in a fight. Of course, this question depends on whether the fighters are both well-trained or amateurs, and if we are putting them in a ring with specific rules such as mixed martial arts or traditional boxing, or if we are talking about a fight to the death in the woods where anything can be used as a weapon, such as rocks and sticks. The evidence suggests that even the best-trained modern human would have his skull smashed in by a Neanderthal in his prime. Modern humans are the last surviving hominins, but that does not mean we were the physically strongest humans. In fact, archaic humans such as Neanderthals were at least twice as strong as a modern man, based on studies of their anatomy and genes. Neanderthals were dangerous predators who possessed superhuman athletic abilities, characterized by well-developed muscles, quick reflexes, and powerful arms and legs, enabling them to rival the most skilled fighters. For example, Neanderthal pectoral muscles were twice the size of modern humans, and they could generate almost twice as much upper body strength. Neanderthals had extremely thick neck muscles to hold their heavier skulls, which would make it difficult to get them in a headlock, and the few fossils and full genomes we have tell us that they had incredible strength and genetic advantages. The image of the Neanderthal as a squat, chiseled brute is sometimes overstated, but Neanderthals definitely possess strong, muscular bodies and wide hips and shoulders. The density of their bones, the width of their pelvis, and the thick areas of muscle attachment indicate that they were very muscular. Contrary to the notion of Neanderthals as being stooped over like a gorilla, they walked fully upright, but the comparison with the gorilla may not be inaccurate when we are talking about strength and reflexes. What's more, in recent years, there has been a significant increase in the number of known genomic variants associated with endurance or power and strength athletes. This has resulted in a better understanding of the genes that affect athletic performance in Neanderthals and other forms of ancient humans. Remarkably, one study found that Neanderthal genomes contain a greater number of gene variants associated with power sports than living humans. Researchers have discovered 39 power-associated gene variants in modern humans and Neanderthals and found that the majority of the power-associated genetic variants are more common among Neanderthals than among modern humans. This is consistent with power-related phenotypes being more common in Neanderthals than in modern humans. What's more, it is possible that Neanderthals possessed even more genes associated with power and endurance that are not found in modern human populations. Skeletal and genetic studies prove that ancient man would have been a formidable opponent, spending their lives consuming massive amounts of red meat and protein-rich bone marrow. Strength, the ability to exert relatively large forces on objects in the external world, was likely a critical component of Neanderthal adaptation to Ice Age Eurasia. Neanderthal postcranial skeletons tend to be robust, reflecting a body that was well adapted to generating and withstanding large forces. As mentioned, the bones of ancient man were up to twice as thick as modern man, and if the attachment points for muscles were any indication, they were extremely strong. Many of the Neanderthals archaeologists have recovered had huge forearms, possibly the result of a life spent stabbing woolly mammoths and straight-tusked elephants to death and dismantling their carcasses. Remarkably, their muscles were so strong that their forearm bones were actually bent from the force exerted. In fact, the remains of a 50,000-year-old Russian Neanderthal suggest that Neanderthals were heavily pumped up on male hormones, possessing a hormonal status unlike anything seen in humans today, according to a recent paper. Like a gorilla, Neanderthals had a larger pelvis and a lower center of gravity than Homo sapiens, making them formidable grapplers. According to scientists, Neanderthals exhibited a pronounced androgenic phenotype, indicating a high level of male hormones. According to the researchers, Neanderthals exhibited unique biomechanical adaptations and a distinct hormonal condition that does not closely resemble any hormonal conditions found in modern humans, whether normal or pathological. This condition may have developed due to genetic inheritance, living in a frequently cold northern climate, 
and consuming a predominantly meat-based diet. Therefore, an average Neanderthal would have a clear power advantage over his Homo sapiens opponent. The large stature of some Neanderthal specimens, which stood around 5 foot 10 inches, contradicts the stereotype that Neanderthals were all short-statured, and there were likely much larger Neanderthals who lived during the 300,000 years they roamed western Eurasia. There were likely Neanderthal genetic freaks that were 6 foot 5 and 250 pounds of muscle, just like there are today in modern humans, but who also possessed a much stronger skeleton, a face and skull that could take much more punishment and muscle density only a modern human on steroids could produce. While speculative, a fight between a Neanderthal and a modern human would be like putting a female boxer in the ring with a man. The boxer, Mike Tyson, with his robust and compact physique, exemplifies the Neanderthal body type. However, despite his exceptional strength, speed and aggression, he would have been no match for a Neanderthal. The Neanderthal's significantly more robust muscles and enormous skull would have allowed them to withstand even the strongest punches using the measurement for a punch delivered by Iron Mike. During his peak, his punching power measured an impressive 1,800 pounds per square inch. That would result in more than just a superficial injury, but is likely much less than a well-trained Neanderthal in his prime. Mike Tyson had a height of approximately 5 feet 10 inches and a weight of 220 pounds, predominantly composed of lean muscle. According to one study, the average lean body mass of male Neanderthals, based on 26 specimens, was estimated to be 80 kilograms, around 175 pounds. These figures indicate that Neanderthals had a significantly higher average lean body mass compared to modern humans. Lean body mass is determined by a formula that takes into account bone length and circumference. Neanderthaloid humans possessed substantial bone size, but this calculation does not consider additional weight from fat or excessive muscle. Therefore, an average Neanderthal male could bulk up to be substantially more muscular. Neanderthal postcranial skeletons are generally robust, indicating that the body was well adapted to generate and withstand large forces. Nevertheless, the pattern of fractures along with the absence of throwing weapons suggests that Neanderthals may have hunted by leaping onto their prey and stabbing or even wrestling it to the ground. Remarkably, Neanderthal males would engage in face-to-face -face contact, jabbing long, thick spears directly into the animal's flesh instead of shooting prey, such as mammoths, from a safe distance. This is expected, as Neanderthals were generally heavier and more muscular than modern humans and could sustain more punishment. One study concluded that Neanderthals most likely evolved their muscular physiques as a result of lifestyle, genes, climate and diet. Neanderthals also built up strong trapezius, deltoid and triceps muscles by dragging one hundreds of pounds of meat many miles to their caves, often up steep mountainsides. Neanderthals were apex predators and hunted in the extreme, which helped to strengthen their arms. Indeed, Neanderthals seem to suffer a high frequency of bone fractures. This frequency of such injuries is comparable to that of modern rodeo professionals and suggests frequent contact with large combative animals. Another study found that, based on standardized dimensions, male Neanderthals appear to have had biceps muscles that were 16.0% larger than their modern counterparts. Male Neanderthals had average biceps areas that are 25% larger than in the average modern human. That may not seem like much, but male Neanderthals were able to generate forearm flexor tension about 126% greater than the average modern male. By these rough estimations then, Neanderthal arms appear to have been up to 96% stronger than modern humans. In simple terms, they were more than twice as strong. A consideration of the size of muscle attachment sites and of mechanical advantage or leverage in the upper limb of Neanderthals, early modern humans and recent human samples reveals pronounced upper body strength in the Neanderthals relative to most modern humans. Upper body strength was probably important to hunting success in the context of close-range hunting with hand-delivered weapons 
and greater strength probably increased the diversity of prey species the Neanderthals could hunt. Long-range projectile weaponry, as employed by early modern humans, would have relaxed to a great degree the need for upper body strength in hunting success. The glacial adaptation hypothesis is the most widely accepted explanation for Neanderthal body form. Under such conditions, encounter and ambush hunting would have been preferred over pursuit hunting, resulting in greater muscular power and sprinting speed rather than endurance capacity. However, paleoecological data suggests a less cold woodland environment. Under such conditions, encounter and ambush hunting would have been preferred, resulting in greater muscular power and sprint capacity over endurance. Therefore, the highly muscular body form of Neanderthals is thought to be an adaptation to woodland hunting conditions rather than cold. This hypothesis is supported by paleoecological evidence and genetic analyses, which show that they primarily lived in woodland environments. It is important to note that Neanderthals, similar to Homo sapiens, underwent an evolutionary progression. Neanderthal specimens from 300,000 years ago exhibit significantly greater physical strength and resilience compared to those that lived 50,000 years ago. Neanderthals can be categorized into early, middle and late populations, with the later populations exhibiting more gracile characteristics as a result of inheriting genes from Homo sapiens around 120,000 years ago. And with that statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.